Now that we have learned about the atom, let us take a closer look at the protons and neutrons inside the nucleus. We have learned that the number of protons determines the name of the element and also determines the overall charge of the nucleus. But what about the neutrons? Elements can have a varying number of neutrons within the nucleus, but not all combinations of protons and neutrons are possible. Looking at helium again, most nuclei contain two protons and two neutrons. When we are talking about elements with varying numbers of neutrons, it is helpful to name them differently so that we may distinguish between them. To do this, we follow the element name with the mass number of the nucleus. The mass number is simply the sum of the protons and the neutrons, which is the same as saying the mass number is the sum of the nucleons. So we designate this nucleus as helium-4. Notice that when written as a symbol, we place the mass number up and to the left of the chemical symbol. Although rare, it is possible to have a helium nucleus with two protons and only one neutron. We call this nucleus helium-3. Although these two nuclei have different properties, they both have the same number of protons and element name. We call these similar nuclei isotopes. Isotopes are defined as variations within a particular element. Any nucleus with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons, is an isotope of that element. Other isotopes of helium are helium-5, helium-6, and so on. The isotopes of helium that are not stable have been shaded out. It is important to remember that each of these isotopes will still have a helium nucleus and therefore contain two protons. Remember, an isotope means nuclei have the same number of protons. Let's look again at the smallest of the elements, hydrogen. More often than not, hydrogen has one proton and no neutrons. It is possible for a hydrogen nucleus to also contain a neutron. There is a special name for this nucleus. And instead of saying hydrogen 2, we call it deuterium. It is also possible to have two neutrons with a single proton, and the special name for the hydrogen 3 is tritium. Deuterium and tritium are important isotopes involved in both nuclear fission and fusion, so they are worth mentioning. These are examples of some hydrogen isotopes, and again, the shaded isotopes are not stable. Adding a few more protons and a few more neutrons, we see that lithium-6 and lithium-7 are both stable. There are also isotopes lithium-4, 5, and lithium-8, lithium-9, and lithium-10 that are not stable. Let's jump ahead to carbon. Carbon-8 through 11 and carbon-15 through 18 are unstable. Carbon-12 and 13 are stable and most common. Carbon-14 is also considered stable, but decays very slowly. You may have heard of a process called carbon dating. Carbon dating measures the amount of carbon-14 remaining in a carbon-bearing material to determine its age, up to 60,000 years old. Jumping further ahead, we will look at uranium. About 99% of uranium found is uranium-238 and just under 1% of uranium found is uranium-235. There are trace amounts of other uranium isotopes which have some stability. To learn more about stability, check out our next video, Stability and Decay.